How do you measure progress? Now, I talked about how I think it's important to measure progress, but before we talk about that, what you learned, I want to know what you do right now. And it's fine. What do you do? Um, for specific targets for motor plans that I might have, I might have particular lex words that I'm working with that uh -huh. can generalize across settings. And when a parent comes in and says, with those particular um, motor plans we're working on, with um, the words that we're working on, they come in and tell me that, guess what? Today, my child was able to do with the targets that were so working you, on generalization. So you measure progress primarily by parent report? By parent report okay. and doing functional activities to, okay. to look so at. So that's one method. What else do you What do you do? Um, well, I always give homework every day, and okay. I have a chart where um, they have the parent has to check off every day that, that the they child, did the homework. That they did the homework. So you're really not measuring progress. What are you measuring? Well, that's you're just measuring practice. whether they did the homework. Wait, wait, I'm getting to the next. Okay. Part, so then, when they come in, I take a look, you know, because I have like 48 children on my caseload. Yeah. So I take a look at what I assigned them, and I said, okay, let's go over your homework. Let me see here how you're doing. And so then we go through the words or the you know, activity that so I So you're doing do. perceptual judgment of how they did due to the homework practice. Yes, and then okay. once I've heard how they're doing, then I can judge, you know, where I need to start that session, whether okay. I need to go right back and review everything that we learned the last session or whether I can move on to some okay. new targets. What do you do? She's going to hand you the mic. I was going to say randomly incorporating the stimuli you worked on uh, during the session to see if there's retention. Okay, so you're going to measure retention by bringing it into what you're working on that day. Anybody else? How many of you take treatment data? That's okay. Tell me how you raise your hand first, even though how do you take your treatment data? This is very important, you guys. Ideally, I'm supposed to be going, I have paper that I'm putting pluses and minuses, but I'm finding it very difficult to collect data on these guys because there are so many changes and there's like wigglies that kind of sounds like it, but so. Well, I'm, are you in luck? Because we're going to help <laughs> you find for. a way that will solve that problem. <laughs> Who else takes treatment data? And what, uh, how does that work for you? Either one. So I do take treatment data, Mike. I did hear you speak, and I've heard Ruth speak, and I've heard Sue speak, and so I've moved to probe. I know, I'm sort of a stalker. Um, <laughs> so um, I've moved to trying to do probe data. Yeah. What, what I've, so that I'm just probing like yeah. every three to four sessions. Um, but I, tr I sort of second guess myself and understanding like, did I code that the same way? So you're, you're, the every time? barrier you're feeling now is, am I scoring well? Yes. We'll talk a lot about that tomorrow. And the reason I'm bringing this up now is just to have you thinking about it. Because I'm going to argue against taking treatment data with severe children, with CAS, where you're working so hard to shape that movement. If you're stopping every few minutes to put your pluses and minuses, is that helping the child? No. And it's also not a good way because you're not measuring progress. You're measuring their response to cueing in the moment. So you always want to think about what's my goal? What am I really trying to measure? And if you're really wanting to measure progress, treatment data isn't the method to use. Now you're going to tell me, well, my, in my workplace, I have to do treatment data. I had worked at the Mayo Clinic. I had to give reports every 30 days for every different kind of insurance company. They don't care what you think they read about your pluses and minuses. No. You write a soap note. We worked on so many words. I'm seeing progress at this level on two words at this. You can summarize it that way. And then you show them your probe data every 30 days. We got paid for, from every insurance company by doing that. If you have a school district that says you have to do treatment data, then you need to educate them as to what you're measuring when you take treatment data and, and convince them that's not what is going to be helpful. And you can't do your job if you're measuring all the time instead of treating. Can you tell I really feel strongly about this one? 